Hello everyone, I'm sitting here with uh, Daniel Vallon. My name is Wolfgang Hankeln and uh, Daniel Vallon came from Roscoff, France. He's a group leader there. Um, how was your trip to Bremen and how do you like it here? What are your first impressions? Um, the trip was uh, a bit long because uh, there are not so many flights between Brest, uh, which is near Roscoff where I work, and uh, Paris, and there are not so many flights from Paris to Bremen, uh, but it was okay. So it was, uh, it's basically a full day affair if you want to go from Brest to Bremen. Um, my impression of Bremen, I've been here uh, actually at this university in February. Um, it's um, nice. Especially when the sky is blue like today. Yeah. <laughs> so this exceptional good weather today. Yeah. And uh, that's not typical for Northern Germany. So you can yeah. consider yourself lucky. Yeah. Yeah. Talking a little bit about your background, you're a, a group leader at Roscoff. So um, can you briefly describe your working group and your aims? Uh, well, first, maybe i uh, introduce uh, Roscoff in a couple of words. It's a uh, biological station, which is a very old biological station, founded in uh, 1872. It's one of the first biological uh, stations in the world. It depends uh, both on CNRS, but also on the University of Paris. Uh, because I, I, in those times, uh, the professor from Paris liked to go to the sea to collect uh, animals and so forth, so they established uh, several biological stations around the shore of France. Right now, uh, although we are quite isolated, uh, the total number of people working in Roscoff is about 300 people. Uh, they work basically on uh, marine biology uh, and marine ecology, uh, different uh, topics uh, ranging from uh, basic biology up to uh, really applied ecology. Uh, my group, uh, I'm part of, of a group actually, uh, which is made of three teams uh, focusing on plankton. Mm -hmm. uh, these three different teams, and I'm not the group leader of the team because of the, of the, I'm not the group leader of the group, I'm group leader of one of the team. Uh, the uh, focus uh, goes from um, uh, bacteria, photosynthetic bacteria, up to a very large protists that are part of plankton. And we cover uh, many ex aspects, but our, uh, let's say, key direction is uh, looking into the diversity of these different groups uh, from uh, both um, taxonomic point of view, functional point of view, and using uh, genomics and metagenomics approaches. Okay, um, for the for the audience, um, what is the short course all about? Because it's a joint EU and US workshop, and uh, maybe you can put it in your own words. Um, uh, what the focus of the workshop is about, and what what is your contribution to this uh, workshop? Because you are one of the speakers. Yeah, uh, the the workshop uh, I think is to uh, train. Um, uh, marine uh, ecologists and marine biology into the field of bioinformatics uh, so that uh, to give them access to the tools that they will need uh, to uh, process the uh, molecular data that are becoming more and more important now in the work of, uh, uh, of uh, marine ecologists. Um, my contribution to the workshop is, uh, was to provide an evening, evening lecture uh, on uh, a specific topic on which I'm working, which is the metagenomics analysis of uh, small photosynthetic eukaryotes. Uh, until now, metagenomics approach, which is the, um, basically uh, the sequencing of uh, natural populations, the whole genome sequencing of natural population, has been applied mostly to prokaryotes, and there are very few work on uh, eukaryotes. So uh, I was presenting uh, an example of application of uh, these techniques to uh, photosynthetic eukaryotes and more specifically uh, um, one size class of eukaryotes which is very important in the marine water which are the smallest size class like the less than uh, two three micron cells that in uh, the open ocean areas are very important. And uh, talking about this um, collaboration on bioinformatic tools and the exchange on it, uh, what are your hopes and expectations? Um, and, and how do you uh, think about the interaction between uh, speakers and participants so far? I mean, it's uh, just the, the workshop just began, but maybe you can uh, share your first impressions. 
Uh, yeah, it's going to be a biased impression because I've, uh, I'm just staying uh, two days. Basically, I arrived yesterday afternoon and uh, I'm leaving uh, this morning. Uh, I was uh, really impressed by discussing with the student uh, that there were a really good exchange between the student and the speakers. A lot of questions asked and then uh, students uh, discussing at dinner or uh, over the coffee break. Uh, so I think there is a, a very good uh, interaction between uh, uh, the students and, and, and the um, uh, speakers. Uh, probably there is a difference uh, because on the one hand there are US students and the other one there are EU students and probably uh, the way they, they, they interact is, is a bit different. Uh. <laughs> Well said. Well, um, and maybe you can go a little more, more into detail on that. I mean, what are the differences? And, and well, I think one of the key differences, at least I know, between, for example, French PhD and, uh, and uh, US PhD is the uh, length of time. Mm -hmm. So uh, probably uh, uh, US PhD students are uh, much more, um, uh, a little bit, not much more, but a little bit more uh, mature uh, in their topic because uh, they can spend much more time on, on that. And, and also maybe they are a bit more um, trained uh, to ask questions and to interact uh, than European students, which sometimes are a bit more shy. But uh, this is just an impression. It's just, it, 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 it can, maybe after a week, if I was staying uh, here a week, I would have a different. Uh, and uh, talking about this interaction, what do you think are the advantages um, for this? I mean, it's an international uh, meeting, so what, what do you think are the advantages when uh, people from different nations meet and then uh, try to exchange and work together? Well, I think it's, uh, of course, uh, beneficial, but uh, well, now most of these courses are uh, really international, so, so that's... Uh, uh, um, and... Uh, the what's uh, probably striking is that uh, uh, all these techniques, especially the uh, new what's called next generation sequencing, which is uh, uh, high throughput sequencing, uh, is uh, um, uh, really uh, propagating very fast. <laughs> so uh, I remember when I was doing my PhD. Many years ago, there was a really big difference. I did my PhD in the States, not in Europe. Uh, there was a really big difference between uh, the uh, EU and uh, um, and US. But now this has been uh, completely uh, flattened out, or, or there is, there is, the difference is very very thin. And even if you go to uh, Latin America or to Southeast Asia, uh, uh, all these techniques are propagating very fast and the, the level of the students is, is very, very similar. And uh, what do you think, um, how, so what is important to make it a success, this international co collaboration, and uh, what are your hopes and expectations there? Um, well, this is, a, this is a different question. I mean, I think there, there, there are a lot of exchange uh, uh, between the US and the EU, uh, but what's uh, lacking uh, really, maybe it's changing a little bit, but what's lacking is uh, ways of funding these collaborations. Uh, it's, uh, now we have um, uh, a lot of money put into uh, European collaboration. Uh, in the US, they have their own funding sources, but uh, it's uh, quite difficult to find ways of uh, uh, funding real collaboration, not just, you know, there's a lot of money spent, especially by the EU, EU in uh, traveling money to send people for short um, stays abroad, or, uh, but uh, in order to uh, really uh, um, um, create real collaboration, you need to, to have uh, joint proposals, things like that. And at this level, uh, between US and EU, uh, there is not, not so many uh, ways of uh, doing this. Okay, so this could be one of the outcomes of this meeting, that people agree on some 
um, joint funding or no because this this is not going from this is not going to come from this meeting this is too too political this okay. this has to be, go through the NSF on one hand and the European Commission uh, okay. which is good I mean already they, they agreed to fund these courses I mean part is funded by EU uh, Commission mm -hmm. and then uh, the other one part by the NSF or I don't know who, who in the the US. Uh, but there should be more of this uh, type of, um, uh, you know, uh, ways of funding uh, real collaboration. If you uh, would summarize your, your talk, um, what would, would be, if you put it in a few sentences, sentences um, what would be the message for the people? Um, that, uh, I mean, so one of the messages is that uh, we still uh, know very, very little about uh, the organisms that uh, contribute most to primary productivity on Earth, especially in the uh, very central region of the ocean. Uh, one, key, uh, one key feature is that we cannot put most of this organism in culture, so we don't know what they are and what they are doing. And that's where uh, approach such as metagenomics can help, mm -hmm. because uh, from this approach we can uh, really uh, get directly at the uh, natural population and get some idea about uh, what they are doing in this environment. Okay, and um, where do you see room for collaboration um, applying the, these methods? Uh, well, there are a lot of room for collaboration. Uh, there, are, there are a lot of, uh, you know, sampling project or um, where uh, people are, have been, for example, uh, I can cite the Tara expedition, which is an area uh, expedition around the world and uh, with a sailing vessel and where they have been sampling for these communities and where uh, uh, they are doing metagenomics. So this uh, project involves a lot of people and that's one place where there could be room for collaboration actually. All right, thank you for the interview and uh, thanks for taking time to answer all these questions. You're very welcome. And enjoy your time here and stay at the short course. Thank you.